Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Previously on the Taste Master SA, in the semi-final challenge, the top four had to dig deep with the task of creating four unique bakes, each inspired by a different memory. With an impressive combination of creative flavors, La Cerro took the top spot and earned a place in the grand finale along with Max and Molly. But for Nolan, it was an emotional end to the competition. Now the stage is set as the finale challenge kicks off at the beautiful Le Grand Jardin Estate and venue in the Cape Winelands. I'm in top three. Had anyone asked me at the beginning of this competition, would I make it? I probably would have said no, but I've proven myself and I'm really happy to be here. Oh, it's actually surreal to be here and actually at the place where this finale is going to take place. I'm feeling so happy, so excited and um, feels a little bit like a dream. I kind of said to myself, as long as I don't get eliminated first round, then I'd be happy. So I'm very chuffed with myself. How's it, guys? The three of you have been through it all. Ups and downs, celebrations and tears. But here we are at the grand finale. Molly? In your wildest dreams, did you ever imagine that you would be hearing those words and standing right here? <laughs> never, 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 never. But I'm so happy to be here. Lesejo, you wanted to fare well in this competition and honor your brother by doing so. In my mind, you've done that and more. But how do you feel? I feel like my brother's watching me from wherever he is and he's very proud of how I've expressed myself and fallen in love with food again. Yeah, I agree. Max? You wanted to get your excitement and your passion back for baking and cooking. Have you succeeded in that? I've totally succeeded in that. I feel more inspired and in love with baking than I ever have before, actually. Well, you guys must be wondering, what are we doing in this beautiful setting? This is Le Grand Jardin in Stellenbosch. This is where we will crown the Taste Master. I just have to give it my all. I'm ready for what they have in store for us. I think I've got this one. For this final challenge, you will have to draw on all your skills and experience that you've gained through this journey. This will be the ultimate baking test. I feel like because of the setting, it's going to be something pretty big. I'm thinking we're definitely going to have to cater for an event. You will be baking for a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> What a way to end the show, and I'm looking forward to it. I cannot believe of all the things that we we're going to be given in a finale. We we're given a wedding menu, but I think that that is actually so awesome. I've only ever been to one wedding, and I was six, so I don't remember it at all. Now, this is not any wedding. This is a celebrity wedding, and I would love to introduce you to your client, radio personality and Expresso Morning Show presenter, Zoe Brown. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Zoe. Hi, how are you guys feeling? Good. <laughs> Zoe is ready for the next exciting stage of her personal journey. This year, the love of her life, civil engineer Robbie Anderson, asked her to be his one and only. My lovely fiance has never been on camera before, so this is a first for Tastemaster. My love, come here. This is your moment to shine. Oh, I'm just mine. Come on. Yeah, it's fine. Are you okay? I'm good. Are you comfortable? Very comfortable. We were in high school together in Durban. We've always been friends. And yeah. even when life took us on different paths, we've always kept in touch. And ever since you moved back to Cape Town permanently, I think we just crossed that line from friends to more than friends. We were hanging out quite a lot. And then the one day she invited me to paint. And I think it was that moment when um, we were just in our casual wear and we were painting and having a good time. And when I left, I just missed her, man. I just missed being in her presence. Yo, this is so <laughs> strange. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect when it came to planning our wedding. And mm. when it comes to planning our wedding menu, we've pretty much gone on food we've enjoyed at weddings and functions. With the hearty meals that we enjoy, we want to try and incorporate that into our wedding because you don't want to leave a wedding hungry, right? We just want 
our guests to enjoy the food because I think if you go to a wedding where the food's not that great, that's the one thing you kind of remember from a wedding. Mm. You want to make this day your special day. Do everything that you want to do. Make the wedding about you guys, you know. So we've, I think, we've tried to incorporate our life, our quirkiness, our small things that we enjoy in our wedding that's, you know, going to represent us really. Now guys, a quick reminder of what is at stake here. It's 50,000 Rand in cash from Royal Baking Powder. It's 100,000 Rand's worth of KitchenAid equipment, plus another 100,000 Rand's with AEG appliances. And that's not all. The winner also gets to join the Expresso family, a place that's very close to my heart. I've been a presenter there since 2015, and it really is a wonderful platform to just skyrocket your career. To prove that you are worthy of the Tastemaster title, you will have to create a sample menu that would be fitting for Zoe's fairy tale wedding. Zoe is so awesome and it actually feels like quite a privilege to create some inspiration for her for her wedding. This final challenge will be broken into two parts. For the first part, you will create an hors d'oeuvre offering consisting of five items. And for the second part, I would need you guys to create my dream wedding cake. A wedding cake can take days to make, so I'm a bit nervous to see what the times are going to be like. To help you along the way, we're going to give you a few minutes to spend with Zoe. Find out what she loves, what she hates, and what she has envisioned for her fairy tale wedding. And after that, we'll head back to the Taste Master Kitchen to start this final challenge. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling pumped, actually. Pumped to go to the kitchen, give my all, create a delicious menu, and hopefully blow Zoe away. I know this is a big challenge for you because after this, one of you will be crowned the taste master. So for some inspiration for my big day, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to get some menu inspiration and also to see some beautiful wedding cakes. I'm so glad we're not actually catering for her wedding. We're just doing like a sample thing. Uh, I think the actual wedding would be way too much pressure. Zoe, I'd love to know what kind of bride you'd describe yourself as. I would describe myself as a bit of a modern romantic bride. I haven't decided whether I want to go too modern and I don't want to go too soft with the romantic side, so in between. So when it comes to your ideal wedding menu, what kind of flavors are you looking for? We love Mexican food, we love Mediterranean food, so lots of fresh but also healthy. How would you describe your dream wedding cake? I have a sweet tooth. Um, I love cheesecake. My fiance loves carrot cake, but we also love cake in general. So I don't think you can go wrong with any anything sweet. Is there a certain style you'd like your cake to look like? I want people to remember it. I would love people when they arrive at our wedding, see the wedding cake and feel like, oh, this is Instagram worthy. We want to snap a photo with it. But as beautiful as it looks, it also needs to taste good. When it comes to the food, we have decided to drop the first course and rather have, you know, hors d'oeuvres served on platters. So keep that in mind that we really want our guests to be able to bite their food. Chances are they'll be standing around doing that. Any other questions? <laughs> well, I think you guys have some planning to do, but I will leave you and see you in the Taste Master Kitchen. I'm hoping that I can hold on to some of the things that she said and hopefully have one or two of my dishes at her wedding. There's going to be various elements and kinds of bakes, so this is a massive challenge. Coming up, the pressure is on as the top three take on part one of the grand finale, the hors d'oeuvres challenge. Why not order from your oven? With precision, raise your standards and make it matter. AEG, challenge the expected. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Right. I hope you guys are prepped and ready to go. For your first task, you will be creating a wedding hors d'oeuvre menu. And to help us along with this element of the challenge, we've invited a very special guest. She's a cookbook author, she's an entrepreneur, and an Instagram food sensation with her page, Dining with Nao. Nero is in the building. I love Dining with Nao on Instagram, social media abroad. I can't wait to just have a chat with her. 
My name is Newa Nonzo. I'm a food writer, an entrepreneur, and an award-winning cookbook author. A friend of mine suggested that I should start a page on Instagram and actually teach people how to cook. And I was like, okay, it sounds like a plan. I had no idea it was gonna explore and become what it is today. My life is so interesting. I get to eat and taste food. I get to create food. I get to be around food, which is um, something I'm passionate about. I managed to launch my first cookbook last year, which has won an international cookbook award, which is something I never expected. Being the guest judge on The Taste Master is so exciting for me. The contestants are so talented, they're so inspiring, like everything that they've been creating thus far has been spectacular and I'm excited to see how today is going to go. Please welcome Nayo Nonso. Nayo is like kind of a diva of the food realm, so yeah, she's brought that energy to the kitchen today. Hey guys, hey judges, how's everyone? It's so lovely to be here. Congratulations for making it this far into the competition. You guys are fantastic. I cannot wait for this day to start and to get rolling. Right guys, you will have three hours to create five hors d'oeuvres. You need to bake enough for at least 10 people. After this round, the three of us will be sampling your menus. Even though this is not an elimination challenge, what we taste today will make a significant contribution to our overall decision. Got it. However, there is a bonus. We will be selecting a dish of the day, which means one of you could be walking away with a 90 centimeter AEG five plate gas stove with electrical oven, basically what you've been using to create your delicious bakes throughout the competition. Can you believe that they are throwing in a stove as if there wasn't enough on the line at this point? And here I was thinking I got the best prize last week, but today is even better. I really want that stove. Well, there's a lot at stake today and a lot to play for. Are you ready to bake more memories? <laughs> While your baking time begins in three, two, one, go. Good luck. There's a lot at stake today. There's this is obviously one component on the challenge and then there's a wedding cake. So you really do need to nail this as well as your cake if you are going to be the next taste master. How's it, Max? Hello. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling a little bit like my head is all over the place today. I'm struggling to focus, actually. Really? That seems out of character. I know, my head is just... <laughs> oh, you've been sarcastic. <laughs> see, I didn't even pick it up. Normally I pick it up. <laughs> my gosh. I see a lot of ingredients. Have you got a strategy in place? I'm kind of taking key foods from different countries and combine them together. So for example, I'm actually making butter chicken but with pork belly and then I'm going to put that into dumplings. So it's like a play on a bunny chow but with a bit of a Asian oh twist there. I think the menu must surprise people but still be absolutely delicious. Again, you're doing some things that you've never done before. I think that it's, it's that point in the competition unless you're going to blow people away. You know, I don't really want to play it yeah, safe. What's the point? Yeah. yeah. And I like that you're taking risks. Would you like your caterer to take risks on your special day? <laughs> <laughs> I get to pre-taste it, then by all means you're free. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm starting with my butter chicken tacos. The first thing I need to get done is my bread. For my bread, I'm blending some yogurt with some coriander to get a nice green hue. Then I'll be adding the yogurt to my flour so that my final flatbreads are nice and green to create a contrast of color. Lesejo, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good so far. I have a few things going. I have my first order getting ready. So I'm making a Durban curry meets Mexico oh, yeah. and I'm making a butter chicken mini taco. Oh, and I can imagine you're going to bring lots of different flavors to this. You said you love bold flavors. So I'm having a lot of, lot of spice going here because I want them to be pretty punchy, but not too punchy because chili is not for everyone. True. Yeah. You two take into consideration that she's not the only one at the wedding, <laughs> right? I, I will okay. be mindful of that. I'm popping my chicken in the oven to let that marinade soak into the chicken and give it some flavor. And then I will take the chicken, add it to my tomato sauce. Lemon meringue doesn't take the longest to make but it is a few more layers than everything else so I'm going to start with that first. Once my pastry is in the oven I'm starting with my brownie base. It's just cocoa powder, sugar, oil, flour, very basic. I'm not worried about the simplicity of the brownies because they are a staple for me and I'm going to try and elevate them with the topping. How's it Molly? Hello, good and you? Yeah well thanks, how are you feeling today? 
A bit more stressed than usual, but I think that's normal because it's a final. Did you see yourself making it all the way to the finals? I think we all want to, but I, no, I didn't actually it's still think. A little bit surreal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> How are you interpreting today's hors d'oeuvre menu? I'm doing flavors that I think I would enjoy that are South African, Mexican, and Mediterranean. All right. Good luck. All the Thanks. best. Thanks so much. Good luck, Molly. Thank you. I'm seeing a lot of yellow. Is, is, is that one of your favorite colors? It's my absolute favorite color. <laughs> one day when you get married, is that something you've kept in mind? Like you set on the colors you want oh, your yes, wedding theme yes. to be? I'm one of those people who've been planning their wedding day since oh, they were a little girl. Wow. So this challenge is very like sweet and I'm so excited for it. It's smelling so good. Thank I love you. those colors. Thank you. What type of food would you like to serve at your wedding? I love big bowls flavors as well, so I'd love something very spicy but very Afrocentric and true to home. Mm. That's a very good take on it. Hopefully my boyfriend will ask me to marry him. How long have you guys together. been together? Three years. Okay. Yeah. So. Do you feel like there's pressure when you've been dating for three years and now society expects you guys to get engaged or are you ready to get engaged? It's unnecessary pressure okay. on my boyfriend, not on me. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe after today's episode, he'll be like, okay, she's ready. You better. <laughs> I'm just pouring some milk into this sandwich bread so it can soak up, get nice and moist. I'm going to add it to my bogoti that I'm making today. I really, really love bogoti, but obviously you can make it interesting. So I'm baking a cheesecake. The base is going to be the bogoti mince that I'm going to make quite nice and thick and solid so it can be a base with the savory cheesecake filling and then the marmalade on top will be that nice sweet play on what you might usually use a chutney for. Hey Max. Hi. How's it going? You look so focused. Yeah, but that's because time is flying. Yeah. <laughs> no. It smells divine in here. Yes. Have you been to many weddings? Not enough, actually. I feel like I'm the funnest wedding guest, so I can't understand why. Yeah. They wouldn't invite me. Do you ever want to get married? Is I actually thought I'd be married at this age, to be honest. I think we all did. <laughs> and then life got spicy, so here we are. <laughs> Speaking of spicy spice. food instead. <laughs> Now that my brownie's in the oven, I'm gonna start with my batter for my little cornbread that's gonna go in the mini muffin trays. For the mini bread batter, it's gonna be a can of cream corn, as well as just the basics for bread. And then I'm also adding some cloves and paprika in it for a little bit of flavor. Molly, you're making some progress. <laughs> Are you one of those girls that dreamed about how she wants her wedding to look one day? Uh, no, I think I still have a while to wait. So no, I haven't dreamt about my wedding yet. <laughs> well, that's good because you're still pretty young. Some people um, dream about their wedding days when they're still young. And I'm always like, why? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have friends that did that. I unfortunately wasn't. Um, I wish I did though, because now that I'm actually at the planning phase, yes. I'm, I'm like, I don't know what I want. Well, I thought I'd be married by 19. Why did you think you'd be married I by 19? I don't know, it's so scary. <laughs> Okay, obviously I got to 20 and there was no husband. <laughs> I was like, scrap that idea. And then I just don't think about weddings anymore. It's like the last thing on my mind. Have you been to many weddings? I've only been to one wedding and I was six and I was the flower girl. Okay. <laughs> I don't have much experience. I don't even remember the wedding. How do you find this challenge? I'm finding it a little bit difficult because I can't really picture what it's supposed to look like and how the spread's supposed to look. But you know, thanks to the wonders of modern technology, I can get a rough idea. <laughs> In true Lissacho fashion, I'm making shoe pastry again to make my churros for the tomato sauce. And I have my dough done. It's waiting to be fried. I'm doing well for time. I could have obviously done more if I was a bunny, but unfortunately, I am doing the best with what I got, and I'll start stressing probably in the last hour. I just messed up so badly by making a butter pork curry, and I didn't blend the sauce before combining the pork back with my mixture, so now I don't have a blended sauce. Um, and I cut the pork up so finely, this is going to be in like a little bun or dumpling, I haven't decided. So I'm just trying to think how I'm going to, I don't actually know what to do about that. Remember guys, this is your final opportunity to win a KitchenAid stand mixer plus a Palmola tamper worth a thousand rand. Bake your most beautifully decorated celebration cake using royal baking powder. Upload it onto social by replying to the competition post using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA and hashtag BakeMoreMemories. And you could be a winner. Happy baking! 
Up next, will Max's mistakes under pressure count against her as time on the clock runs out? Choose Parmalat for better lunches, better dinners and better family time. Parmalat makes life better and better. Parmalat. I'm going to start with my falafels. So falafels are pretty much just chickpeas and then you add a lot of flavor to it. You just blitz that up and I'm doing mine in the air fryer. By adding the royal baking powder to the falafels, it makes them super light and fluffy so it's nicer to do them in the air fryer because they get like a crispy top and then they're fluffy in the middle. Contestants, we are one hour in, only two hours remaining. Let's push. I'm busy picking out the onion and tomato that I didn't blend in my sauce, so okay. I can at least blend some of them. Do you want to go for a more smooth approach? That was the plan with the curry sauce, so I could reduce it way down. So I'm yeah, just doing a little band-aid on like a really big wound issue kind of thing. <laughs> Are you saying things are not going to plan, but you're making a plan? I'm making a plan. I mean, really, would it actually be a challenge if you didn't forget at least four things? <laughs> so what did you forget? No, I mean, this is number one. So okay. let's see. The next three are just waiting for you. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. My vision for this fish and chips is to have a heavenly bite from the ocean, really marry seafood and that starchy potato that's nice and crisp. I'm making all my mayonnaise from scratch today. So first I have a seaweed mayo to go with my fish and chips, and then I'm also making a harissa mayo to go with my steak and grapes. The sejo? What in the world? Um, <laughs> I was like, she's blending seaweed. <laughs> okay, so I'm making my seaweed mayo to go with my little fish and chips with the tartar. That is creative. That is super creative. What kind of fish are you using? I'm using salmon. I've already cured it and it's ready and I have some trout caviar to go on top. Ooh, it looks so scary. It looks great. It looks great. <laughs> I'm gonna dip my fingers in it. <laughs> <laughs> Save it. Save it. So I hear you remaking something. Uh, yes, I'm remaking my brownie mixture because I have like a standard brownie mix so I can tell when it comes out wrong. I think I might have mixed it too long. Also, when the mixture was too thick, I added a little bit of milk, which I don't usually do. Okay. So that probably messed it up a bit. Good luck. Thank you. Max, I've been keeping my eye on this. What's simmering away here? That's going to be a uh, onion and tomato marmalade for the top of my babuti cheesecake. And the tarts you're making now? These are actually sweet corn fritters, but because obviously they need to be small and neat and pretty um, consistent in size, I'm using these so that, yeah, they're all the same. The fritter, is that served with anything? Is yeah, it so it's going to have a jerk style fried prawn on top with a uh, pineapple salsa and just some sour cream. I love that. Thank you. So this is going to serve as the base for a cheesecake. Oh, I mean, Baboti does have that egg layer on top, you know, so it kind of lends itself to being a cheesecake. If you're someone who goes around looking for things to turn into cheesecakes, yeah. which apparently I do. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice creative take on it. I would have never thought of that. I love that. I am making a semolina cake. For my cake, I'm just creaming some butter, sugar, eggs, and then instead of adding flour, I'll be adding some semolina, almond flour and a little bit of polenta for texture. I made a similar cake for the fine dining challenge and Fritz really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping it will score me some points again today. I don't know what I'm doing. Molly? What is this concoction here? My mini milli bread. That's the batter for it. Uh, is there anything that's been completed at this stage? My falafels are kind of done. My lemon meringues are kind of done. My brownies, I made a second batch. So those are almost done. What happened okay. to the first? I'm very familiar with this recipe. Yeah. And it's just not the consistency I wanted it to be. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Yes. I've made brownies before and I got them wrong all the time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like I've tried it like a million times. It is. <laughs> the best decision you've made is to redo it. Yeah. Thank you. Redoing it is just going to save you. Especially if you think you have extra time, like five more minutes to yeah. squeeze it in. Contestants, we are halfway in. An hour and 30 minutes remain. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Good luck. Now that my new brownie batch is in, I'm going to start with my meringue, which is an Italian meringue. I'm just piping on my meringues with a piping bag, and then I'm going to blow torch them. Hey, girl. Hi. 
How are you doing? I'm running a little bit behind. I'm hoping I can get everything done. I'm worried because the last hour I wanted to dedicate it to assembling everything. Hopefully these will bake in time and I can make my buttercream, which I still have to do, and make my steak, which I still have to do. <laughs> yes, yeah, I was looking over here. There's a lot of items that haven't been opened yet. Yes, yes, yes. Next up, I am going to deep fry my wonton pastry. These pastries must get nice and crispy to be a beautiful base for my salmon pokey. I pop them on some paper towel to drain and I get going on my donuts while the oil is hot. I'm going to now make my tomato salsa, which is literally just tomato, a little bit of coriander and chilies. Ooh, I'm such a wuss when it comes to spice. <sighs> Oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot about them. It's okay, ah. it's, what are those? Um, they're my flatbreads from the curry. And the green from? Coriander. Oh. Oh, just coriander? Yes, just okay. coriander. It's popping up nicely. <sighs> Don't get distracted then. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. These prawns are going on the top of my sweet corn fritter and I'm still debating whether or not to cut the tails off. I think they had a really nice decorative element and I personally like a prawn tail crunch, but um, not everyone does, so we need to decide about that still. I'm starting with my blinis. So it's like a little crumpet with some cottage cheese on the top and some salmon. I feel like blinis are like a classic finger food thing, so that's the first thing that came to mind for me. I see you have a steamer there. Yes, I'm going to steam my dumplings or steam buns or bao buns, whichever ah! bows, whichever I end up eating. Probably a variation. It's great. And it's so like, I don't know, steaming adds almost a different flavour. Um, it does. It's it's so so a bit lighter, it's not light. too dense. Exactly. Yeah, well, let's hope my dough actually turns out like that. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you. Contestants, we are two hours in, only one hour remaining. Let's finish up. Let's are you, go. How are you feeling? <laughs> Not feeling it. Okay. <laughs> I'm using my Pamela double cream yogurt to make uh, the tzatziki for my falafels. So Molly, what is this last hour? What are you applying your time to? I'm actually just making all the toppings for all my elements and then I just have to plate and I'm done. Okay. So I'm actually not feeling too bad. I was very stressed in the beginning and I think that helped me move quite fast and now I'm actually quite chilled. And remember there's an item of the day, an hors d'oeuvre of the day. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty peachy. Yeah, yeah I definitely want, I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I definitely want this. <laughs> <laughs> I think any baker would love to have that in their house. It's so nice, it's so handy. Shoe pastry has not worked for me once, but every other time I've made it in the kitchen, it's worked perfectly. So I have to end the season with some shoe. It wouldn't be Lissaho if there was no shoe. That looks great from here. Yeah, I'm happy. My little <laughs> cheesecake didn't crack yet. I'm gonna put that in the fridge in a moment just to cool down further and okay. quicker. <laughs> and like time-wise, 45 minutes. Yeah, so well, my donuts are done now, okay, so I'm happy about that. Yep. I need to make salted caramel still, a praline. Um, I need to steam my buns. I need to make the salsa. So quite a lot to do. Yep. Um, but, but doable. But doable, I think. Rather you than me. Yeah. <laughs> so a glass half full. The glass half full. What else can we do at this point? Is this your rendition of the fish and chips? Yes, these are my fish and chips that I have revamped, reinvented, and hopefully they, they are a fun little take on a classic. Okay, ladies, there are only 30 minutes left. That means this is the final half hour. Woo! Let's go, guys! Woo! Shoot, Molly, that's an upgrade. Yeah, I'm so glad I read hey. it. <laughs> How are you planning on serving this? So I'm cutting it into little squares and then I'm gonna have my peanut butter and um, cream cheese frosting just on the top. So after that, after topping, you're pretty much there. Well done. I'm really happy with the way my mini tacos are coming together. They taste really good, not too spicy, but they have that integrity of a curry and they look beautiful with the cream. I'm busy making my salmon pokey now. There's a lot to do in a very little bit of time. Okay. You only have about 25 minutes to go. That's enough time. <laughs> Thank you for your faith. <laughs> Got this? 
there are a few elements there and there that aren't being executed to the standard I know I can execute them. And that might bite me in the back when I present this to the judges. Classic Max behavior, nothing on the display table. I've never been not stressed near the end of the Tastemaster. Like all the competitions, there's usually like the last 10 minutes, that's when it starts to get hectic. But maybe I'm getting better at this or maybe I really mess this up. <laughs> so Max, you've got um, one of your hors d'oeuvres on the, on the table there. Yeah. And the rest just requires some assembly? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just trying to do what's most important. Oh, that's pretty. That looks nice. Thank you. We are in the final 12 minutes, Max. Not to add to the pressure, but just a reminder. Thank you. That I would love that you present all five items today. Me too. I did manage to taste everything because while everyone else was stressing, I was eating my food. <laughs> I like my flavors. I think they're good. Are those little guys all right? I left them in the pan too long. Yeah. So now they, and I overfilled them as well, so. For those that come out nicely, they look so good. Yeah. Those are the ones who eat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Contestants, the final five minutes of this stage of the competition, let's go. I'm cutting my cheesecake, and because it's quite a big cheesecake and it has not had that much time to cool, it's actually quite soft, and I just start cutting the sides. They're not beautiful, but hopefully they'll stand. I'm encasing my grapes with a nice slice of steak and then I'm just going to drizzle some mayo and if I have time I'll also drizzle some of my basil oil because I have some left. Well done, guys. Well done. I look down at my canopies and I think one or two of them are worthy of an AEG stove, but I saw what my fellow contestants made and they did beautifully. That was absolutely wild. I thought I was going to be able to put like little coriander dudes on and last elements, but we didn't get there. I feel a bit disappointed to be honest because it would have taken so little to just make everything complete and like literally four minutes. And yeah, but I think the flavors are great. So hopefully that carries through. I'm happy that I ended with everything on my serving board. This half of here is beautiful. This half is slightly disappointing. Um, so I hope these really shine through and silence the disappointment in the two that didn't really fulfill what I wanted. I've never been this chilled in a competition, so I'm a bit worried about that actually. But I'm happy with all my elements, so it's nothing more I could ask for. Next up, with mixed emotions at the end of the challenge, who will impress with the hors d'oeuvre of the day? Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Judges, once again, as always, to the very last second. It was so hectic. Mm. There was lots of running. And I can't believe they each person managed to get five dishes on the board. Yeah. I'm yeah. very impressed with that. There were some great aromas, and I loved seeing how they were working very hard until the very end. Mm. Yeah. Molly played it safe, had a great strategy, exactly. executed according to everything that she planned. And I thought that was excellent and we're all very excited. But those that went above and beyond also finished. Yeah. So now it's to see, you know, is it better to play it safe or take risks and see if you make it. <laughs> it is the taste master. It is the taste master. So <laughs> let's bring on the first hors d'oeuvres. This competition has showed me I'm capable of doing things I never imagined before. I'm proud of what I've made. I hope the judges oh, enjoy it. Nice. I just want to take my phone and do a little video. Oh. It's beautiful. 
Thank you. Oh, this looks amazing, Lisecha. Well done. I Thank mean, that you. was tough. It was. You maxed out your time. You did very well. So happy to see we've got five items here. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy with what I've presented. Thank you. We will taste. Lesejo, thank you so much. You put in so much effort, so much thought, so much innovation into all your bakes. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Your butter chicken is very delicious. It's very tasty. Even though you had to condense the whole meal and the experience, the flatbread as well, still chewy. The flavoring into it didn't add a big component, but it doesn't matter, it's fun. It looks great. Chiro, great quality, really, really good. The fish and chips was interesting. I love the concept. I thought the seaweed's gonna br bring in quite an interesting character, but it actually confused a little bit. Uh, the flavor was a little bit odd. So innovation, 10 points. Flavor, hmm, you know, maybe there's a tweak there. But I wanted to just tell you about this little polenta cake of yours. I thought it was excellent. It's simple, but it's delicious. So well done, all in all. Good job. Thank you. Oh, Lesejo, I love the flavor profile. The churro dish, I'm thinking from a practical stand. I love this little cup idea, the little bit of, is it basil oil that you yes, use? Yes. It really added a great touch to it. I also really enjoyed your butter chicken that you served on the flatbread. My only concern, and here I'm thinking of someone wearing a white dress, would be perhaps the portion. I was a bit mindful of how I had to eat that. Yeah. But other than that, the flavors and what you have presented were incredible. Thank you. Really, really good. Um, I enjoyed everything. The grape was really delicious with the meat. I love meat, so <laughs> you had me there. But with the grape, I would have um, pickled it in something a little bit more acidic, more pungent, because a grape already has got so many juices. And now imagine that with the, with the meat, although this was really good as well. So, no man, congratulations on this. This was awesome. Thank you so much. There was a little dent in my joy that they didn't enjoy the fish and chips as much as I thought they would but I'm really grateful that they saw the creativity and the thought I put into my spread today. I feel good. Hopefully the judges enjoy all of my elements as much as I do. I think I'll be fine but we'll see how everyone else does. Ah. You were so calm and collected finishing well I before know. everyone else. Are you happy with what you're presenting? I am happy with what I'm presenting. It's everything I set out to do. It looks really beautiful. You know, when you finish so quickly, it means that you were very, very sure of what you were making. So I'm, I'm excited for it. Let's try. Thank you. Molly, I can't believe you're as young as you are and you presented this to us and you were the first to finish. I love your selection that you've presented us with. The falafel ball, I would have loved a little more of a sauce to it. I was struggling to swallow it a little bit because I went for the whole ball. Maybe I was just being a bit of a glutton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when it comes to your sweet treats, Wow, you have a true talent for it. I mean, this little lemon meringue cup, the cup was super crisp and the filling was so, so smooth and it just really worked. And even your chocolate brownie, super moist. I just wish that moistness was also in the savory dishes, but overall, I thought you really brought some flavors together. Absolutely. You did a good thing by redoing those brownies. These brownies are really good. Usually in a brownie, you'd have nuts inside and you've kind of given us a puree here of peanuts which is fantastic because you don't get the, the texture of the nuts um, disturbing your teeth or anything you can bake girl thank you this is your real thing <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> yeah i think that's just great feedback and I, I think we're all in agreement the falafel for me is a complete dad unfortunately it wasn't crispy it was very dry it was unfortunate my um little cornbread was spicy and then that salsa's freshness and that whole blend of it for me was an i love this your sweet items are 
perfection today. This lemon meringue is excellent. Well done, good job today. Thank you so much. I think I did okay. I don't think I've done enough to win, but I'm very happy that the judges like my stuff and I am very happy with the feedback. I give myself like a 70% satisfaction rate. I'm happy with the taste and I'm proud of what I managed to do in the amount of time that I had today. Hi, Max. Hello. How are you feeling? Oh, tired. <laughs> I know you were a bit stressed there towards the end. Oh, my goodness. But you managed to pull through with five dishes. Let's try. Mm. Max, you have such an intricate understanding of flavor and texture and then with that the aesthetical really enjoyable the flavor of your curry the fact that you use the turmeric the textures and flavors of your cheesecakes just spot on really really good this was probably my highlight just for the multiple levels of flavor uh, and crunchiness and then you know corn bits and spice and pineapple it was really intricate and very very advanced i thought it was great this jerk prawn it was absolutely amazing um, it tasted like someone that's been to the caribbean you know your stuff when it comes to that the whole spread was really fun the donut was good the cream you used was also really good this cheesecake is absolutely fantastic so well done and I love the flavors you brought together. Um, each bite was different and I love that. Your dumpling is unbelievable. So tasty. And with your cheesecake babuti, I've never ever had that flavor profile together. That little onion marmalade at the top really just brought the two together. So well done on being very creative with that dish. Thanks. Good job, Max. Thank you. Remember guys, this is your final opportunity to win a KitchenAid stand mixer plus a Palmola tamper worth a thousand rand. Bake your most beautifully decorated celebration cake using royal baking powder. Upload it onto social by replying to the competition post using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA and hashtag BakeMoreMemories. And you could be a winner. Happy baking! Contestants? Well done, congratulations. The judges and I felt that it was unnecessarily tight and nerve wracking, but we felt that it was a very high level execution of today's brief. Not just practical, but so beautiful and delicious. And we really enjoyed it. So well done. Give yourselves a hand. Standing in line waiting for the verdict today is different because it's just good news. No one's going home today, which feels really, really great. So it's almost like we just have something to celebrate. And I just want to say, you know, for someone that is busy planning her wedding, you've given me loads of inspiration on how I want my canopy and hors d'oeuvre hour to be. So thank you for pushing the boundaries, but also just delivering such flavorful and wholesome food. Now, as you guys know, we are not announcing the Taste Master SA winner today, but what we tasted today will definitely contribute to that final decision. Of course, there's a bonus today. We're going to take some time and acknowledge the best hors d'oeuvre of the day. But to kick us off, all of us have highlighted some of our favorite dishes today. Let's say who? Your polenta cake yeah. with that buttercream icing was perfection. We loved it. Well done. Thank you. And the dish I loved the most was the Bobodi cheesecake. That was really delicious. Your take on that dish um, was so elevated to how it, it's traditionally made. And for a person who doesn't like Bobodi normally, that was really, really good. So congratulations on that. <laughs> And then Molly, we also collectively thought our favorite dish of yours was that incredible lemon meringue that you presented. I mean, that little cup was just so crispy. The top, the presentation, everything worked so well. You definitely have a talent in the sweet department. <laughs> well done, guys. So as you can see, it is extremely tight, but we had to choose one. And so the hors d'oeuvre of the day was
was Max's Bobooti cheesecake. Well done. <laughs> I'm actually shook. Everyone loved the Bobody cheesecake though. Um, and so I'm so glad that's something that I really enjoyed making, eating, and also thinking up. Yeah, everyone enjoyed it as well, so I'm so excited. I tasted those Bobody cheesecakes and I'm equally as in love as the judges are. And of course, Max, you are walking away with a 90 centimeter AEG 5 gas burner stove with electric oven. Oh my, my gosh. gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, obviously, as you can see, at this point in the competition, it is still extremely tight. Everybody brought their A-game today, and that was very clear. So, um, are you ready to bake some wedding cakes? <laughs> Great, we'll see you in the Taste Master kitchen tomorrow. Boy, hello. Congratulations to our episode 10 viewer winner, Chantal August, who submitted her signature Tastemaster Focaccia, served with butter chicken, marinated in Parmalat plain yogurt. Chantal walks away with a brand new KitchenAid stand mixer and a 1,000 Rand Parmalat hamper. Another feel-good production.